That's right. Time once again for the exclusive film and video report as my baseball cap hits the microphone. That's how professional <laughs> we are. We were just going over James Rana's kill list. I had no idea he had such a thing. Did you? Uh, I can a hold list a gr- of enemies. <laughs> I hold a. Gr- I'm like the Steve Buscemi character in Happy Madison. I was thinking more along the lines of Nixon, but okay. Is Joe Namath on that list? He better not be. Well, today we are going back to our childhoods. Yes. On the exclusive film and video report. If I could, I'd go back to my childhood every day. <laughs> I know. Actually, I have a feeling I never left. Yeah. We're going to talk about some of the great children's television programming of the 70s and 80s. You know, you'll never see shows like this anymore because of all this new high-tech digital animation. Work. No, what you, you see a lot of CGI shows and yeah. a lot of cartoons uh, brought over from Japan, which... James and I have both done voices on, so we probably should knock them off. I'm grateful for the pain. (laughs) There you go. But uh, some of the ones we remember, like the New Zoo Review. Yeah, that was a very, if you watch that now, it's a very twisted show. It's very, it was, it was, uh, it's Doug and Emmy Lou or something, or Doug and Emmy, right? Doug and Emmy, he had the bell bell bottoms and the big glasses. This is what I love about these shows is because something happened in the 70s where they let the hippies run everything. I know. It was a wonderful, (laughs) now you had a big frog. Was it Froggy and uh, you had an owl? There was an owl and then there was Henrietta was the big uh, hippopotamus. hippopotamus. They actually had an album. We have the album somewhere. (laughs) Oh, yes, that's right. We do have it here at the station. And what we should say, now, I used to watch the show religiously. I couldn't I couldn't tell you anything about it other than the fact that I was in love with Emmy because I loved any girl. She wore short skirts she, and go-go boots. She wore very short. I mean, for I that know. kind of show. And he and Doug had the big scarf, the, the Fred scarf right, from right, Scooby-Doo. Right. She wore these go-go boots. And some of the songs, there was a whole song about watching TV. I don't know how that's educational. <laughs> well, as long as you're watching New Zoo Review. In fact, I had one of my first toys was that frog toy. I had a little rubber oh, you frog did. toy. <laughs> I did. The new and zoo review. Magic Garden. Um, Carol and Paula. Paula. Oh, yeah, sitting I in the those. Magic Garden. They were wonderful. The Chuckle Patch. The ch- I love the Chuckle Patch. <laughs> and I love the, was it the the big um, dandelion or the sunflower? Yes, of course. And then Story Box in the background where they would get the little costumes out and perform a, a, a story for that day. It was so... Again, these two girls who look like they just, uh, you know, they just left Woodstock and now they've got their own children's program. Again, we've let in the 70s, we let the hippies take (laughs) over and take over children's television and they would sing their songs. It's nice to say hello. 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 <laughs> it's nice to say hello, hello, and how are you? I'm fine, me too. We're fine, and how you are you? You don't need to play I'm CDs fine, anymore. You don't. I, and that song is in my brain. It's I, like it's tattooed on my brain. Let me tell you something. I looked forward to these programs, and I turned out sort of normal. <laughs> except, and, for your, <laughs> except for your kill list. I don't have a kill list. I just, I, I just have a bunch of people that I, you know, you know, that I will not forgive. And Carol and Paula will never be on that I list. I love Carol and right. Paula. Sherlock, and Sherlock, of course. Squirrel. Sherlock, and then there was Flapper. What sex was Flapper? I, I don't know. Flapper, I could never figure out if Flapper was a boy or a girl. <laughs> there was always some sort of weird tension going on between it, Sherlock and Flapper. It was the most psychedelic set I've ever seen. Uh, th- another one that used to be on, I think weekdays, was Captain Kangaroo. Bob Keeshan. He had started off his career as Clarabelle the Clown yes, on yes. Howdy Duty, And he was actually a Marine. Right, <laughs> and he supposedly ran that set like a drill sergeant. Yeah, I hear uh, not very flattering stories about him. But what what exactly was his deal? I know he was a captain. <laughs> I could never figure out exactly. I mean, the Magic Garden. Yeah, hey, yeah. we're in the Magic Garden, kids. Woo, hey. took up. But <laughs> <laughs> Captain Kangaroo. I don't understand. I never understood his haircut. Mister Green Jeans. What was that all about? <laughs> Mister Green Jeans was quite. The actor was quite old when he played. Yes, Mr. Green. Yeah, he was like a hundred years old in nineteen seventy three, and that show was on <laughs> up into the eighties. And then the other thing was uh, the rabbit puppet. The rabbit. He'd get Mister Captain Kangaroo would give a carrot to the rabbit puppet. I was in, infatuated with that when I was a kid. I love the ping pong balls and the moose. Yes, yes, the moose. And they used to show little cartoons and stuff. Little cartoons, including a, um, a little sketch called The Picture Pages with Bill Cosby. Here's the interesting thing about Captain Kangaroo, which will come up to our, uh, another program. A young puppeteer making puppets and performing on that show and even acting occasionally is Kevin Clash, who will go on to create Elmo. By the way, one of the uh, funniest uh, Jim Belushi moments, he didn't have very many on SNL, but he did play <laughs> an angry, drunken Captain Kangaroo. There was there was there some sort of uh, blooper floating around with Captain Kangaroo being drunk? I don't I, remember that. I don't know, but you know, if you watch SCTV, Dave Thomas does Captain yes. Combat. Yes, Captain Combat. 
Uh, you also wanted to bring up the Electric Company. The Electric Company is a very innovative program. It had a lot of stars. It was sort of like, again, you know, it was like the hippies take over. Uh, it was like the hipper Sesame Street is really what it was. It, it really was. You know, it was very fast-paced, really top actors on the show. Oh, yeah. Mel Brooks even joined the cast. Yeah, you had Tom Lair doing songs. Bill Cosby was on that show, too. Morgan Freeman, before anybody knew who Morgan Rita Freeman Moreno. was. Rita Moreno, who was was uh, you already know, her, already a huge uh, film and musical star on that program, Gene Wilder. Yep. And the interesting thing about it was the head writer of the show is comic actor Paul Dooley, who That's would strange. go on to play Molly Ringwald's dad in Sixteen Candles. Right, and I know him best as uh, uh, Wimpy. Wimpy. I know him best as Wimpy <laughs> in Robert saw, Altman's Popeye. A movie that that will probably be one of our topics one day. I think that's uh, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, Easy Reader. Of I course. loved Easy Reader. Easy Reader and the Spider Man. It was the strangest thing. Spider Man would appear, but he wouldn't talk. Yeah. And the kids would ask him what was going on, and he would. He would sort of pose and then uh. go, wow, and there'd be a voice balloon above his head, and you as the child would have to read it. There was a comic book tie-in. Marvel yeah. Comics put out a comic book called Spidey Super Stories, which was aimed towards youngsters who were watching The Electric Company. And that is that on DVD? Yes, it is. Yes, I, I, got, I picked it up for like a buck. Yeah. At FYE, I guess it didn't sell all that. Morgan well. Freeman refused to ever mention the electric company during those days. That was a, he said it was a low point in his career. He was not getting much work. He had a lot of issues, and he took the job. But for years, you were not allowed to bring up the electric company in interviews or even mention that to and him. And you know, every time I saw him, I kept thinking to myself, "That's the guy from the electric company." How can you look when you're when you're on a show that is going into millions of homes and millions of children are growing up and seeing you perform that you become a part of their lives. At what point do you start to say, you know what, me not talking about this is kind of dumb because they're all growing up watching <laughs> well. me as, as uh, you know, easy reader. Zoom, another Zoom. PBS show. Very high energy, a little too much energy for me. You didn't like the kids all sitting around on the on the plastic uh, blocks or the wooden blocks and uh, I singing like, their tunes? I like the big B, Doobie. Yes, yeah, yeah, they used to do that. And then... That's, my dad used to call me Doobie. They used to always... <laughs> they used to always... <laughs> I think there were doobies around a lot in the <laughs> 70s in children's television. They used to always uh, make their uh, their <laughs> racing, the, the wooden racing cars. They used to always do that. You know, it's a strange show because it seemed to be filmed in total darkness. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, they were, it was just a group of children who were in some sort of film noir hell. And there was nothing else around. It was, was all just, black. The set yeah, was all the black. The set was all black. It was so sparse. And, and the kids' outfits were quite unusual, very different colors. Yeah, they dressed different colors, or they had kind of like a spelling bee type, of, or, or, you know, a, a, a bumblebee look to them. But uh, And then I remember they would also read a lot of, like, letters sent in by other kids. Yeah. And in a way, you know, this is sounds this sounds really stupid, but... <laughs> That was like the internet before the internet existed. I would watch that show and say, oh, there's other children with similar <laughs> similar likes. Well, what about Romper Room? Romper Room, yeah. You know, I used to get Romper Room and Zoom a little confused sometimes. Well, they, they were there were a lot of games on What I seem to remember about Romper Room, I forget the name of the lady who hosted it. I'm sure we'll get emails about <laughs> the it. Lame how, the lady. <laughs> how could you How could you not remember her name? But she used to hold up the magic mirror at the end. Oh, magic mirror. And talk and, and, and say, oh, I see. Like she was looking through the television. I used to get so close up to the TV. Right, that, hoping which that it, she would, yeah. Which deteriorated my eyesight. Right. And but, yours as well. That's she's on your kill list now. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to sit there and wait for her to say my name. Now, she never said ghosty, obviously, because that's nobody's name. But Dave, I kept waiting. And, and I think once she said it, and I was like, holy crap. She can see through the TV. When she saw Jimmy, I was in heaven. It would have been creepier if they put her on the Zoom set in total darkness. <laughs> I see Jimmy. I see David. It always seemed like every episode ended with her getting those preschoolers, and they would tie like soup cans to the bottom of their shoes. I, and they would walk. And they would walk around, and that was like the end of every episode. And But the children looked like they really weren't having a good time. Like, this was... I this don't think that host left the set after the end of the day. I think that's where she lived. I don't know. <laughs> what else do we have on your list? Here? Vegetable soup. Now I remember uh, vegetable soup vaguely. Very this PBS. sort of like an electric company, but done cartoon style, and it was very, very seventies looking, very stylized. It, it just came out of nineteen seventy four. It had a cool, like cod soul type of you know yeah. theme song. The vegetable soup. V very very similar to Schoolhouse Rock. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. Know what I'm similar saying? to that. Uh, then you had one you wanted to mention. I actually have two quick ones. I want okay. To mention. Sure. Um, two that were very important in my childhood. I'm, I think my mom will be listening. Joyous Fun School, hosted by a wonderful woman, Joyous Cheryl. She was a backup singer for Duke Ellington, 
And she was a um, wonderful woman, and she actually is um, still around. And she was like one of the first top African-American children's show hosts. And her entire cast, there was Mr. Beebe, the professor. It was on a few networks. And they were all like top musicians who she brought in. I've never seen this And show. it was wonderful. She actually, believe it or not, moved to like uh, Saudi Arabia in the 80s. And she actually was able to get a deal where she created a show for children there. <laughs> wow. She was an amazing woman. The other quick one, and I think you remember this one, Slim, <laughs> Slim Good Body. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, let me tell you about Slim Goodbody. First of all, I hated that show. That that show, there was nothing more frightening than Slim Good because if I remember the 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 show correctly, his he wore a, 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 leot, a leotard yes. that had his internal organs <laughs> yeah. on the uh, on the leotard. I always thought to myself, does that mean he's exposed? He's a cadaver <laughs> hosting a show. Let me tell you something. I actually had Slim Goodbody's phone number. We spoke about him. How does that happen? So stop right there. <laughs> How does that happen? I spoke to him about being a guest on my program. Okay. He, and he was actually interested, but he never got back to me. But he gave me his number. So we, we kept on playing phone tag. He, believe it or not, has a Slim Goodbody touring show, which goes all across the country. He directs it, and all these young men tour the, in these body stockings. <laughs> Jeez Louise. And he even had, like, he had his character, Harry and who was hair? Who talked about hair grows on your head and <laughs> and elsewhere? I could, you know, I can just you imagine know. this show. Slim Goodbody, come, hi kids, hi, come on, <laughs> come on stage and watch my intestines fall out. What else do we have? We who have else? one last one that Which I wrote one? down: the Great Space Coaster. I loved the, the Great Space what's, Coaster. What's interesting about this show, not for the audience or anything, but it, it was sort of the end of my watching kid shows when this came along. Um, I remember it airing. I remember the debut. I remember that they were showing these little promos hyping this program up. This was going to be the the big kids show of the uh, 80s, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And, you know, no Gnu's is good Gnu's no. without Harry Gnu. Uh, <laughs> remember, that? remember that clown, big uh, cover costume clown character who used yep. to ride in this? And who was the guy? He had the key, and he would put the key in the thing in the, on yep. the box. Yep. But here's another. Here's the great space, space coaster. coaster. Come on board, whatever they're singing. Yep. Anyway, Kevin Clash, who was a puppeteer for Mr. Yes, yep. um, Captain Kangaroo, was doing double duty oh. after he would finish work at Captain Kangaroo because he wrote a wonderful book all about his life as a puppeteer. He would go to work on the Great Space Coaster, doing puppetry work and building building puppets for that show as well. So this guy was sort of like a children's show whore, is what you're saying. <laughs> he would just go and, to, and at the same time. And he'd, yeah, he'd go to these various different shows, glean whatever knowledge he could get, and move on to the next gig until he eventually worked himself up into uh, Sesame Street and Elmo, and then well, he clobbered the competition. Well, he was subbing for Sesame Street at the same time. Oh, my God. Well, listen, you got to eat. And then I guess well, all of this really ended with Pee Wee's uh, Playhouse. That was the most unusual show. I never got into Pee Wee's Playhouse enough because it was so unusual. Well, I think, you know, I, it certainly has a, a tremendous reputation in terms of, like, its art direction, its style. I don't know if it was particularly educational, but I know that when that came along, as big if, as a uh, Pee Wee fan, the whole world was at that time. Oh, huge. I couldn't get into it because I was just past the age group of something like that. Yeah, I mean, you, you were a teenager at the time. I, you know, this was two or three years after the movie. So he was doing this project. What was interesting is one of the best programs he ever did, he did a Christmas special. Mm -hmm. It was an evening special, and he did everything. He did a whole tribute to Hanukkah. He did Kwanzaa. It was the most wonderful holiday special all across the board. Well, there's our, there's our out cue. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe how much time we spent. We spent a lot of time talking about children's television of the 70s. And I'm, there's going to be some older folks who are going to listen to this, and they're going to say, hey, what about Super Circus in the 50s with Mary Hartline and her legs and that little skirt? Maybe someday <laughs> we'll talk about uh, television program, children's television programs from before we were born. My mother was once in the peanut gallery. She was she really on Howdy Doody? Yeah. All right, see? It's all happening. By the way, the entire peanut gallery on James and his kill list, <laughs> just so you know. It's just an angry list.